Hello everyone. Today I will be working on the GVC DD9. It's a famous top of the line model. I believe it's been released somewhere around 18 or 1984. Uh, it has quite cool features when it can adjust the level using the motor. Let me turn the light. So you should see an arrow here. Let's be fine without my head. I, and if I will be using these buttons, error will be moving. And from everything I have read about it, so it's a motor which moves this arrow and port to increase and decrease uh, record level. It has computer calibration modes, so three head deck source type mode, peak view mode, uh, three head and quartz lock direct drive. You see, and this DD mean is really uh, direct drive, and there should be quartz lock when it's running. For some reason, it's not. Why? Right. Let me see. Wow, it just shoots. <laughs> Tape compartment, tape compartment to me. Right, let's see what it can do. Right, it's place. Okay, we see levels. Good. And you see quartz lock now. Now it's work. Right, fast forward. That's a little job. Yeah, rewind is definitely struggling. So, uh, Owner provided uh, adapter which we will be replacing in this deck. I hope it will work, for, work just fine after we clean lubricate everything and replace other tire. Why? Right. So far, so good. Reset works. Counter, stopwatch. Yes, yeah, say seconds counting. Memory and after rewind modes. Okay. Uh, so it reminds me my GVC DD5. Uh, same set of controls, uh, same tape transport with electromagnets. Uh, uh, this display like uh, reminds me my DD77, in which I actually killed the CPU for the counter. My deck works perfectly fine. So, yeah, pretty nice deck. There is output level. Usually it's scratchy, so I will be cleaning it up. And let's let's work on it. Let's see what we will get. See you in the next part when we will be disassembling and working on the tape transport. See you and bye. Okay guys, I'm here in the process of disassembly. So these two connectors on this side of the tape transport board, these four, one, two, three, four, on the top, there is one there which connects to this small board, disconnected. This one, it gets along all this board to this connector. Uh, then heads, a rise head here, record head underneath this board right there. I playback connector is right here. So when we have everything disconnected, now I have to uh, remove tape transport from this deck. And I just mentioned that I would need to also release wires from here because they are not sit on the deck, they're connected to the chassis. Oh, yeah. So that's how this deck is being built. Uh, it's uh, it's similar to other models uh, we've been working at the same age. Same tape transport with two relays here. Uh, the only difference is second board, uh, which is uh, suited for automatic calibration. And you see it has a separate GVC CPU built on it. Oh, yeah. Moving on, let me pull up the transport and let's work on it. See you soon. Hey guys, after releasing the front panel, releasing six screws holding tape transport, two screws holding 
this uh, damper mechanism. Two screws holding this board. I pull it out and I see that there is two more connectors. This like uh, purple and rose black wire here and blue, black and purple here. Wow, that's a lot really <laughs> for this single tape transport. Just too many connectors. All right, let me complete, pull out and see you soon. And you would not believe me, but after everything, there is two more wires, which sits just on these connectors, like that, the white one here, and another one I would need to release before I can pull it out. And I'm not sure where it's going. Yeah, another connector right here. That's how many wires for this tape transport. Wow. It's more than a lot. See you soon. Hey guys, in this part I will be disassembling this tape transport. So quick things first. Let's remove the damper mechanism. I believe we need to lubricate it so it would not eject so quickly. So let's go here. And here it goes just too quick. Uh, here is the brake. I, this brake should should slow down. I'm not sure why it goes so quickly. Okay, I will take a look on it a little bit later. Maybe just like the, the brake is, is worn out and don't have enough friction. Yeah, that's here. When it holds, that's where it should be. Go smoothly. Why? Let me see why it's so. When it holds here, and it should go smoothly over friction mechanism from this side. And on the opposite side, it should go easily there. So, as it's assembled, not properly i need to check because it should be pushing here so when we pull in it should be holding and when we push back it should go like there all right i will check with the service manual if they do have this information now as far as remember to disassemble this tape transport we should do a lot of exercise starting from this top mechanism and there is an either, as you may see. Okay. Let me release this top part. Like that. And I need to release the spring. Mm -hmm. Done. Next, we need to remove the front cover to get to this mechanism here. So I believe this part needs to be removed. Here it just sits in. Okay, let me see. Wow, it's a lot. That's the belt for the counter. It's still good, still stretchy.
Okay, there is ground wire on the bottom. Done. Okay. Now you see we can release the doors and this mechanism. And door will go with the light. So these two wires from power supply are for the light. I'm not sure if it's LED. I don't see resistor. I there may be just luminescent light there. All right, done with the door part. Now we have access to the height there. This belt is good. So what I like in GVC, so after 40 years, they still work. <laughs> uh -huh. So it's, you see how flexible it is. Yeah, so fast forward, it runs directly to the real mechanism right here, you see. So this left side is uh, completely flat. So just like for reverse. You see, to rewind the tape. Right side, we have option when it's fast forwards and it's directly connects to reel. And the other option when it's pushed in and runs the inter internal ring. And this one, you see, it's uh, rotate separately using the friction mechanism. So that's how supply, take up side uh real works during playback mode so you see it's it's moving and i don't see some electromagnet so this one for the heads yeah when it gets up it pushes it down and it sits on the lower ring no yeah. and this one i believe it breaks or pause mode Okay, so this mechanism is a little bit different than the one in GVC DD77. I fixed it last year, if you remember. This is a little bit simpler to service. Okay, we just will go and lubricate all these parts so they would not stuck in the nearest future. Good. And I need to remove this idler to replace the tire. So has these plastic rings here. Small is cut and bigger is not. So let me see if I can pull it out. No, it's not. Yeah, it's cut. Okay. Open is the small one. Come on. It's very tricky, always work with these rings, considering there is a pressure from the spring underneath. Let me see if I can use two tools, one like that. Another one to just open. Yeah, it did work. So here, 
the small ring bigger ring the spring now we can get either of the friction mechanism see now you see it's it's fully cracked so there are multiple multiple cracks on it so yeah, it's uh, already worn but it still like looks pretty pretty good really if it would be just well clean it or sand it it still would work after all those years tremendous so this mechanism has like just counter belt direct drive motor and very reliable idler in my gvc dd5 this one was like uh, fully round and still was working pretty fine and here we just get another spacer from underneath i believe All right good now to save the time usually i do a cut to remove the tire otherwise they hurt and sometimes may not be removed still it's still like flexible it's not so hard but it's already cracked okay let me get the new one luckily it's a proper size <laughs> that's a good sign okay and let's install it to not break it i'm using my small screwdriver here it's round and we can just pull it gently around like that and then like remove the driver now you see it sits well and we can install it back and this will go to trash now reverse order Spacer. No. Idler. Wow, that grips much better than the previous. Definitely huge improvement. Now, the tricky part. Install the spring and everything else on top of it usually the most hard part because like all these parts need to play together okay and again we'll be using two heads and two sets of tools let me put the ring back the small one Gently push from two sides on it. Like that. So while it sits in the cut thread for it, and then release. Done. You see? Quick and easy. And now the grip, wow, it's much better. So it will be rolling good. All right, next we need to lubricate all these parts, everything which moves. Yeah, let me see what moves and where.
Yeah, you see? So that's how the head carriages fix it. One screw here, one here, and one here. And there is no balls. So it's playing just like crazy. This means that when it will be working, azimuth would be bad. Huh, also interesting. Here, take a look. So this rice head, it touches here and then bends a little bit. And there are lots of lots of dust. Wow, it's maybe even not dust, it's some friction material is glued there, so it needs to be cleaned. All right. Can we improve this wobbling? No, it's, it just wobbles on every side. And here is the most in the middle. I'm not sure how it will keep azimuth. Aha, uh -huh. that's how. So when this roller goes down, from the opposite side, it pushes uh, carriage to, to the top, you see? And it has a, a less room to, to wobble. Okay. Interesting design. Now, let's do lubrication part. So, all these moving pieces. Need some lubrication. Here is another one. I probably would need to take a look into the pinch of a roller. Probably it's need replacement. Interesting design for the heads. Wow, how many switches. <laughs> and here. Okay. Need to see if we need to deoxidize them. Wow. Uh, here so we will go in between next let's go here Parts done. So you see the brakes. So the brakes being released by this magnet. So when heads go down, then brakes release and it sits like that, I believe. Yeah. Okay. 
I don't see retention clips here. Probably that's why it's so so worn from this side. Yeah, so yeah, there is a groove for retention clips. Let me install one. I believe it's three millimeter. Three, sorry, three millimeter. This still goes free. But we are reducing friction in this part. I still we all lubricate it a little bit. Just for the case. Okay. I believe I'm done with this part. Everything underneath see some plastic. So it should be good. Now it has has Lots of wear. The book's not even. I'm not sure how it will perform, but owner says it performs still pretty fine. We need to remove capstan and lubricate it. And together is not a simple task, as you may see. So let's untangle these wires. Unscrew here. Oh, this was not tight. And this provides ground here. Part number one. Part number two. Okay, it's again everything not tied up. I'm not sure why. It's too much room. Okay. This one. This is a ground wire. This one is regular. This one with retaining clips. And here, one more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this piece is, is glued here. 
Maybe if it's for noise reduction. So we will just remove these two screws. Yeah, so that's electromagnets mechanism uh -huh. and motor attached. Next, it's everything sits on the same board, so I believe it's, it's the one. And three more. One is here. One is here. And one is here. Not very friendly construction, as you may mention yourself. And here we get the motor, in which connected to other board using the wires. Now to lubricate everything here, we need to remove this retaining washer. Okay and remove these three screws here. And here we get access, finally. You see the coil, and that's our capstan. And that's where we need to lubricate, because it's, it's dry, dry, dry. Whew. See some retaining space and fallout. You will figure out. I hope you're still with me. It's a little bit boring, but it's how much work it needs to be done. So one bearing on this side, other bearing on this side. Now, now it runs. Good. Lubricant here. I believe we need to remove the old one. Let me know if you think my videos are boring. I will think how to improve. 
Now we have to assemble everything in reverse order. Here we go. It's moving. Good. Three screws. Two, three. Yeah. I was thinking once, like, if I can reuse this uh, direct drive motor in the other deck, and I figured out that it would not be possible because this board would not allow us to use the second cup stand. That's the point. Okay, everything assembled, rolls smoothly. Now we need to wipe the lubricant from the shaft otherwise pinch roller may be harmed remember to always do that and this oil ring would not allow alcohol to get into the bearing Okay, now it's time to assemble back. Done. So check that it rolls freely. Oh, rolls nice. <sighs> Magnets. I'm not sure what this part is going on. It's maybe from the side we've been rotating a lot. Okay, let me spend some time. I need to check where this part should go to and then meet you there. Okay, just found this part goes right here to compensate for the hole size. Now, two small screws go from here. Now the big screws. One from here. Okay. 
sorry I'm trying to make it visible for you so you would learn the process and next time you will do it easily done next I need to install this board and make sure that wires will go properly right here What a mess. <laughs> wow. It's not a Sony design, definitely. And this mouse can go back here. Now for the fixing these wires. Completed with this part. Hope it was interesting. Next. Most tricky part, assemble everything back. <laughs> This one was about here, and this goes right here. Okay. We are getting close, if you mention. Oops. Forget the ground wire. done with this part so now we have a door okay next
this should go on top of the switches because it should be pushing switches down this mechanism oh so it will be a little bit tricky to assemble Probably need to release a little bit of these screws to have some flexibility. This part and this part. Boom. Whew. Now we'll show you how it works and why it's important to have it like that. Just let me complete from this side. Okay, see what's happening. So when the, we deciding to open the door, when we click on the release button, you see all those switches are pushed up. If this would not work or would not assemble properly, your tape would not go out. It will be just holes by, by these pins here underneath. I may demonstrate here. Yeah. So we install in the tape. Alright, don't have holes, everything is in there. Now it's released. Let's get metal tape, for example. So you see it gets here into the chrome and it gets here into the uh, record protection. And if you pull it out, it goes out of the tape like that. If you don't, you see, tape wouldn't go out. Only when we release it. Yeah. That's how smart this mechanism is. Okay, next piece. It's nice and shiny part. So this will hold our door and we will properly <laughs> install it into the position like that. Okay. And that's where this small screw goes in. Right. Now watch this. Uh -huh. I tied it too hard. Interesting. This is time we probably using the wrong screw. No, no, this one was there, so probably it shouldn't be tied. It's interesting because if you fully tie, it just will not work properly. 
may release a little bit. So here is a tape sensor. Let's tape in. Good. This part done. And here is about works. Next, I have to take a look on this mechanism, make sure that it will work and install it back. It's, it's quite simple, so you can do it without me, right? So it sits like that, here. So meet you in the next part when I will assemble it back to the deck. Okay, guys, here I just fixed the mechanism, so you see how it should work. Easy in slowly out so now we have this friction part which built in inside see it's working <coughs> excuse me and it's working like that that's how it's designed and that's how it should work okay now i'm ready to assemble it back And this would be it. Also, I will lubricate all parts which opens and close the door, all these moving pieces. See you soon. Hey guys, and finally, after two additional disassembly, because like one spring which returns the lock for eject uh, get disconnected when I pull out capstan, so it's uh, holes over capstan uh, bearings base. I had to disassemble and put the spring back and another glitch was with this electromagnets. So one of them did not uh, get into position, did not pull uh, the lever. So now when everything is assembled, that's how quiet and quick it works. And here is playback. Yeah, it's played so some recording on this tape. It's a test tape, so I'm not sure where it may contain some music or some test signals. Uh, we may try to use uh, I believe this tape should have some music on this side. Closer to beginning. This requires locks and gauges. Yeah, it has been like a uh, really crazy disassembly. I was uh, screaming on the designers. Some the solutions, I would say multiple solutions, I don't like. Even if it's work good, it's reliable, but service this guy is like really inconvenient. Too many uh, pieces are like uh, glued together, and as a result, oh, it was quick and, and quiet. I just miss it when it gets to the beginning of the tape. So that they, they may make it even better like all those connectors all those control boards and sitting all on tape transport okay right. now yeah the plane for some test signal yeah, some test signal i am not sure what we're playing so now it needs to be adjusted tune it you see tape transport work well, pause works. All mods works. You pass forward a little bit. And let's check uh, if recording can be engaged. So it's kind of metal tape. Okay. Yeah, rear power is engaged. Okay, good. I'm not sure how this works. Okay. It does bias. So it's 
so it's calibration let's see I'm not sure I had to pull out carriage but it's still it's still just bias equalization sensitivity uh, equalization medium and equalization high wow so many tuning conditions interesting good everything calibrated on metal tape so i hope it would play well now i will check up azimuth levels and everything around it and let's measure how this deck can perform see you bye bye hey guys i continue tuning this deck as i told you from the beginning i have seen that head has like uh, not even surface not flat so has a worn I'm observing a difference between like 400 gears and 15 kilogears. It drops minus 3 decibel. So I had to talk to owner because like uh, without uh, head lapping, I, it's not much I can do. I am already applied frequency compensation. They didn't do much. So there is like pads on the bottom board right here. So you may see which you can short and it will add a second capacitor in a parallel to the head and that's how it will work um, it t in theory it should adjust improve but i don't observe big improvements i have seen that one capacitor is 270 but the other one i cannot see it's probably too small and that's how it moves from 0 decibel here and it goes minus 1 on 5 kilogears, minus 2 on 7 kilogears, and minus 3 on 10 kilogears, and keeps this till minus, until uh, till 15 kilogears. So that's where we are. Continue tuning. See you soon. Hey guys, here I'm measuring wow and flutter. It shows perfect levels and it comes to 0 0.02728. Sometimes you see it jumps for some reason. I'm not sure, it kind of 40 gears and then stabilize again. Right. It still plays good, really nice, and you see speed 2997. It's 998 pretty good and overall like even pike to pike is 0 0.045 which is pretty good so i'm still tuning still trying to find what i can do for this deck um i don't think i can do much without head lapping so it calibrates pretty well I just check it up so it's uh, records and plays up to 15 kilogears straight on type 1 tape. I'm not sure, I'm still discussing with owner what to do because even in the source mode I don't hear enough high frequencies which I would love to hear on the other decks. I had them and here using my headphones. Maybe it's just phone's output. I'm not sure. I will have to check on the uh, output on the um, uh, speakers, but uh, using my calibration tape, I'm already see that it's it's not works as I imagine it should. So I may install the frequency sweep tape, and you may see yourself how it's going. So here, see, it goes minus 50 decibel on 15, and when we go below 5k, it starts growing. See, 10k, it skips, and 5k, and it starts growing a little bit. And it will grow like 3 decibel to 400 gears. You see, it's bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, not critical. It's records in place. 
own tapes pretty fine so we'll see see you soon hey guys i spent some more time trying to understand what's wrong with this deck and um I mentioned that in the source, when I switch and tape, I still don't hear the high frequencies on the output. I was thinking more, I made a call to the owner we discussed, and I see that this board has 10 audio switches, like this 436 switches. So we decided to replace the switches, luckily, I had a bunch of them, so I will do it tomorrow. Let's see if it will start playing high frequencies on the source, then I will up the head and we will adjust it and make it perfect. If not, so there is no schematic for the audio part, so there is not much I can do, really. I'm not sure if it affects playback or not. There is a wires coming from the lower board, which uh, make, uh, looks like audio wires. So I'm not sure if I can do more. And this is the output wires. I guess from this board from here. Okay, let me think more. There is no audio switches on the lower boards, only on the top board. As this has CPU and this mostly is about processing the sound and the calibration. I'm not sure if it uses um, playback sound like to Definitely it should to compare, but if this goes back to the lower board and to the upper, there is no schematic. Schematic is only for the top piece and nothing about the audio part, how it works. Actually, ah, actually it's here. So let's see. Here is our sound pass, capacitors, Dolby chip, second Dolby chip, tape source. Uh -huh. Then it goes to the amplifier. Then it goes to the output level and to the line out. So that's a problem. So I can hear high frequencies as well. And here is a phone amplifier. That's it. Okay, let me think more about it. See you in the next part.